Cornelius Sekeleni on multiple charges, including aiding and abetting the escape of convicted murderer and rapist Tabo Besta. Magudumana appeared at the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court earlier today after landing in South Africa from Tanzania. The doctor has been on the run with the man dubbed the Facebook rapist following his elaborate escape from the Mangaung Correctional Facility in May last year. The Free State NPA's Paladi Shuping. Andipa Magudumana is facing an additional charge of violation of the cops. Um, this is in relation to the allegations that she went to National Hospital where she collected the body. Seven suspects have been arrested in connection to the murder of retired journalist Jeremy Gordon. Gordon was killed in an alleged house robbery last month. The body of the revered journalist was found in his Parkview home in Johannesburg. It's understood the first suspect was nabbed yesterday while driving Gordon's stolen vehicle in Auckland Park, leading police to six other men on the same day. The police is Dimakazo Nevuhului. All suspects are foreign nationals and are expected to appear before Johannesburg Magistrates Court soon on charges of murder, house robbery, possession of suspected stolen property and possession of unlicensed firearm. To the city of Tswane now, where residents are urged to use electricity sparingly to avoid power trips following repairs on electricity infrastructure. Power was fully restored to some areas last night after seven pylons collapsed in the east of Pretoria, leaving many in the dark since Sunday. City Mayor Silias Brink. Until we can fix the uh, 132 kV line, unfortunately these trips are going to occur. But we're confident that good progress is being made on site. And in other stories at the moment, the bus services in Pretoria are up and running. And of course, Alberton now has it is it now has a millionaire and Ituba is now looking for the ticket holder who played the Powerball on Tuesday. On to this now. Gold is trading at one thousand two hundred and thirty nine dollars sixty four cents an ounce. The rand is at eighteen rand nine cents to the dollar, twenty two rand sixty six cents to the pound and twenty rand exactly to the euro. Brent crude oil is changing hands at eighty seven dollars thirty three cents a barrel. A fine day in store for Gauteng, Joburg dropping to an overnight low of 11 degrees, peaking at 26, the capital peaking at 28 degrees, Ferenaging reaching highs of around 26 degrees. The top story this hour on Eyewitness News, Dr. Nandipa Magudumana is set to appear in court next week Monday alongside her father. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. Hashtag MSW. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. Censored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready for our sports worldwide? Union Rob and Coach Jerry Shabalala Coach, I just want to compliment you for the role that you are playing in developing women's football in our country. We are going to the World Cup because of the contribution of people like you. Hashtag MSW. Unbelievable. Coming through from a default reaction Monday. Robbie, we can't feel any sympathy for Imarumo Kalans for their lack of consultations with seasoned campaigners in African tournaments. You will not find the same with Sundowns or the other teams. Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. It's a football is a full of surprise. What happened to Barcelona, I think, three, three years ago, four years ago, when they were losing against uh, Liverpool, three, they were to make it three, three, and then four, three. But moreover, there's a lot of things that can happen in this second game. Hashtag MSW. Jerry Shabalala, my guest here tonight. Yeah, Rob, look, we, we're very fortunate, us as Mamelodi's announced ladies, because uh, the chairman of the team and Klopp himself, uh, for us as a team, you know, so that on a weekly basis we get to, to speak, to sit down with his norms, uh, just to try to be as humble as possible. So you're saying it's a weekly session? Yeah, it's a weekly session. What's his norms, sir? Yeah, what's his norms, sir, yeah. That it's, is crazy. It's, it's very, very crazy. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. All right, it's a quick explosion into 947 as we welcome you for the Thursday edition of Marawa Sports Worldwide, wherever you're listening across the country, the continent, or the world, or even on YouTube. Welcome to the show. You're live on Vuma FM, Rise FM, and on Sowetan Live. We capture the moments and we are an interactive show already. It's been it's been a busy evening, eh? Sadio Mane, what's going on in Germany? I think when we posted the the artwork earlier on today, I got so many calls. People are saying, Are you sure you've got the right person uh, in your studio as your guest? Eh? Is this gonna be a 
political talk. What's going on here? Are you sure you've got the right person? I said, hey, relax, guys. Relax, 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 relax. Now, the Special Olympics South Africa, they're counting down to the 2023 Special Olympics, the World Summer Games in Berlin. Uh, those happening in Germany from the 17th to the 25th of June. So just under two months to go. So the Special Olympics World Games are the world's largest inclusive sports event. Thousands of athletes with intellectual disabilities compete in 26 sports. Now, as part of the, the Road to Berlin, the campaign, Special Olympics South Africa, SOSA, as they are known, has also asked the public, has asked you, me, everybody else that's listening, or even not listening, give them a call. Tell them about Adopt an Athlete to help to cover the cost. Now, let's catch up with the chairperson, Dr. Matthew Sposa, and also find out how the preps are going. Doc, good to see you. Good evening and welcome. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to engage with you and the public yeah. on Special Olympics. You know that you talk about Special Olympics, and can I tell you that even without your knowledge, you, even if you're not an athlete, you've already broken a record. How did I break a record? You are the first human being to arrive for this show at 4 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. I'm a soldier. We told to keep time. So we were told, called to be disciplined. So that discipline cuts across my behavior. <laughs> that, is, that is incredible. <laughs> you know, I, I ran off to come and see the guys were like, oh, he's been here since 4 o'clock. I'm like, oh, incredible, <laughs> incredible. You know, politicians are always then, which is your old forte, they would always be the last to pitch up so that, you know, everybody sees them with their bodyguards and everything else. I am glad you've ditched that. So welcome to sports. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about Special Olympics. Absolutely. And about our international games coming in two months' time. It's very important for us, for our athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, people with intellectual disabilities are sometimes, many times actually, ignored, pushed behind the doors, pushed under the bed. We are here to assert their rights, their human rights. And sport is the instrument we use. And we'll talk, I'm sure, as we go along about the various sure. sporting activities we get involved in. Yeah. And as chairman, I've got the responsibility to, to ensure that the movement grows. And the movement can only grow with the support of the public. Yes. And like you were referring to adopt an athlete mm. um, effort. Of, Be before I get to adopt an athlete, mm. because a couple of people get confused, Doc, where yeah. these Paralympics and then there's yes. Special Olympics. Yes. And, and, and yet there is a difference. There is a difference. Yeah. B break it down for us so that it, it, it really registers in people's minds w what exactly it is that we're chatting about now. We're chatting about children who are intellectually disabled yeah if you I must put it that way although we say they are not disabled we say they've got different abilities sure because we assess their right as human beings to the extent to which they have those abilities but it's still people with intellectual disabilities Paralympics is more on the physical side of, uh, uh, largely mm -hmm. and it's apparent but there are, there are overlaps we got athletes who are in both categories and we respect that, and they're, they're champions in the world. Yeah, yeah. So they overlaps, and we always like those that overlap. <laughs> but but it's also it's also great because it really shows the diversity. It shows their keen interest. And when you and I looked at this and I said, okay, maybe it's got to do with the funding that we're going to be chatting about now. Yeah. But when you talk about the Special Olympics, from just your measure, how big are they here in Mzansi in South Africa? You know, Robert. A few years ago. I was approached by President Mandela, our late president, yes. with the founder of Special Olympic Movement in the world, Eunice Shriver, Kennedy Shriver. Yes. They were here with uh, Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah, I remember when? Yeah. They were correct. Here. They were looking for a chairperson, and it fell on my head. I, didn't ha I was not so educated about this sport. Then? Yeah, I had to educate myself. Yeah. And then in South Africa, we only had 3,000 athletes. Guess what we have today? We have more than 60,000 athletes and we're the biggest in Africa. And we intend to reach out to more than 3 million people with intellectual disabilities and make them part of this body. That is, that is ridiculous because you, you talk about Madiba. And, um, you know, for me, I always go back to these words. Sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way 
that little us does. It speaks to youth in a language they understand. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. It is more powerful than governments in breaking down racial barriers. It laughs in the face of all types of discrimination. It is one of the most enjoyable moments for me to be able, as a pensioner, to take part <laughs> in a function of this nature. Thank you. That's 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 incredible. It made you clap like off oh, I wish I switched on the mic even earlier. It, Why, it, though? It, it made me have warm tears in my eyes. Yeah. Because well, Madiba used sports very effectively for the purposes of uniting the nation, building a nation, reconciling people and acknowledging people in various categories of sport. Mm. You know, he was a champion of champions in sport. But why do we lack that now? And and even if I sound like a stuck record, it's great. The stuck records sound great sometimes. It sounds like it's a new beat. So why are we not doing that right now? Because under his presidency, we were able to see champions. Like if you would go away like you did um, the last time at the United Arab Emirates, you got 35 gold, you got 15 silver, you got 12 bronze medals in 2019. That was what you got those athletes would have gone straight to the union buildings. They would have been acknowledged. Yes. They would have probably been given even further medals from the presidency to say, we recognize you, we praise you, thank you so much. You did not leave South Africa and come back and did not get presidential recognition. Why are we not doing that right now? And why, especially with Special Olympics and given the hall, even Noxa knows the Olympic Games, people have never even touched those numbers that you have. Well, we've got the highest number of gold medals in the, in the whole country. Ever. Ever. Yeah. And we'll continue to increase those gold medals and silver and bronze. To answer your question, is an issue of yeah. leadership. Yeah. Leadership requires that one acknowledges one citizen's achievement to motivate the others. Sure. Yeah, we need to always motivate, acknowledge. Mandiba was a motivator. Yeah. We always acknowledge everyone's achievement, big or small. Now, we need leadership at the top. But let me give some small credit this evening. Yeah. I found um, Zizi Koto yes. this afternoon. And I must give him credit. What did he say? I said to him, Zizi, you may not know. This is me, president of, uh, chairman of Special Olympics. So I explained to him what it's all about. He says, listen, when can we meet? Wow. I said, I'll come to your office. I said, he said, don't come to my office. You are my leader. I'm coming to your office. I want you here. So we're having a meeting next week. I want to motivate this young politician yeah. to do the right things like you're aspiring that they should do the right things. He knows. I told him when he was sitting right there and I used yeah. Nongjing at the boxer that went to Mexico yeah. and came back with the World Cup belt, uh, you know, the World Championship belt. Uh, I, I said to him, Madiba would not have allowed him to go to the Eastern Cape without seeing him exactly. as, as a leader. Yeah, we'll have had a cup of tea with them. Wherever he was. Yeah. How did we, we win 1996? Was Madiba going to Parktown to see those guys every morning at 5 o'clock, even before they could go for breakfast? Motivating them better than yeah. their coach sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm glad that you've taken this, this role and you're playing such a prominent and visible role. And that is why when you say to us, listen, the road to Berlin is on, uh, we need to get ahead. We need to find a special way of making sure that people are able to contribute. So tell me, though, about the initiative. I know it's got the backing of even a 1995 rugby, you know, rugby-inspired, uh, you know, champion in Brian Habana, who then went on to win the Rugby World Cup himself. So he, he started off in being inspired. Mm. He is now inspiring others. And he's saying, I can come through and I can help. Tell me more. Well, I think we must give a broader acknowledgement. Yeah. Lucas Khadeb. Absolutely. Fish, Mark Fish. Mm -hmm. those, those stars are part of our motivators, part of Special Olympics. And I appreciate their participation. Beautiful. Now, you have uh, the Adopt a, an Athlete campaign. Let me talk about myself so you don't say, why do you ask people to contribute? You don't contribute. I contributed 80,000. Mm -hmm. I've adopted two athletes, one from Popo one from Mpumalang. And I'm calling on all South Africans who care about people with intellectual disabilities mm. to, to match me or beat me. Hmm. 
if you look, look at uh, the African Bank, they have uh, they've adopted four. Uh, the Star Bus, they've adopted two. Duma Collective adopted one. I'm not doing bad with two. Absolutely. And, yes. and, and I'm not a mathematical genius, but when you say you've adopted two, it literally means per athlete they need 40,000 rand. Yes, I'm committed 80,000. Yeah. Yes. So and two I, can head into yes. the aeroplane, probably for the first yes. time heading out of the country, yes. even at times. And you know, Robert, we've done this before, and South Africans have become all in their number supporting yeah. private sector and individuals. We have never failed to pay for athletes' air tickets. This time we've got 94 people going, but 64 are athletes. I can give you my word. I'm, I'm one of uh, the smartest fundraiser in this country. I was, I was funding ra- fundraising for the, the biggest NGO. Yeah. <laughs> you know it. I won't mention the name. <laughs> but <Yeah>, the <laughs> I'll make sure that every athlete is in that aeroplane and that they have got the washing rack, toothbrush, and everything yeah. they need when they're there. <laughs> that I will do. But I need the support of South Africans. Where, where, where can they go? Because, you know, sometimes we, we, we can reach out and say uh, assist, support. You've got a delegation of 93 in the national team traveling to the games. The costs have to be covered. Um, I know that, you know, special places uh, have also come on board. And we've got to compliment uh, the sneaker shack in Rosebank. You know, people with sneakers that they want to donate, they can go uh, to a sneak a shack they can drop them off and those will then be transferred uh, to some of the athletes as well uh, but we we will with time even post today give people more information of how it is that they can donate or how it is that they can drop off sneakers at various places maybe you want to start off with that no we, we've got offices in uh, sloan street in Bryanston, mm-hmm. and uh, our ceo will come online and give you all those details he's listening to you uh, uh, uh Ancilla. yeah She's been active. She's been... Ancel, are you listening? <laughs> are you there? She has to be there. She must be there. She is there. <laughs> Trust me, she is there. Uh, Ancel, uh, you want to talk? We'll put, her, we'll put her on the line. Please put her on the line. We'll put her on the line. Yeah. We'll put her on the line. And now, we, 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 we would expect um, South African as individuals and, yeah. co- and co- co- corporate yes. to participate in this national effort to support the people with intellectual disabilities. Really, it's a, it's a sensitive category from where I'm sitting, yeah. because of what I said at the beginning. They are marginalized. They are denied human rights. We want to assert their human rights and d- d- dispute the negativity about them. And I know that uh, in a previous interview, Ancilla Smith, uh, the CEO of Special Olympics South Africa, made mention of the fact that you know, many of these athletes will never get an opportunity like this. Uh, saying that our special needs schools and centers are just not good enough to offer sporting competition that they deserve. And so for these athletes, this life, this is life-changing. And it certainly is life-changing. And if we are able to compete against 180 countries with over 7,000 athletes that are going to be there, an incredible honor for these athletes uh, to be chosen to represent. And where, where, where something stood out for me uh, was that was it around about November last year, the three-day event that, that happened um, up in Limpopo? Yes. Epulugwane. Did you come? No, I didn't. Yeah. You, you deleted my number, so I take that very personally. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so in that event, because 2022 is literally a couple of months back, hmm. and if the funding was right, that would change. You would be able to bring this entire national earlier you would be able to get and gather the troops earlier Mm. but you couldn't because every athlete will tell you that at least two years minimum Mm. that they need Mm. to really get in tip-top shape to go to any form of olympics so i think with the funding those kind of things uh, would be able to help us as well all right before you even answer that i want to take a quick break when we come back we'll have our final moments as i said chatting with the chair hey (laughs) (laughs) Any contributions, please, verbally or otherwise, do join us right here. Hashtag MSW. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. On 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. What do you consider amazing? 
At Lexus, we believe it's bringing the future a little bit closer to today. That's why the next generation Lexus NX has the Lexus Safety System Plus that protects people inside and out. A driver-focused cockpit with a 14-inch touchscreen. And, hey Lexus, a virtual assistant that reacts intuitively to you. The next generation Lexus NX. Next is now. Lexus. Experience amazing. You can be fit, you can be cool, you can be sick of this year. You can be carefree, you can be careful, you can be anything you like. Just gotta be ready, gotta be steady, gotta get you prepared. Why don't you switch now, why don't you switch now, why don't you be with Best Med? Be anything, just be with Best Med Medical Scheme. Switch to us today at bestmed.co.za. Best Med Medical Scheme is an authorized FSP. Rolling Stone calls it deliciously dark. The Hollywood Reporter calls it TV's best show of the century. While Tabang Modiadia from Deep Slut calls it the most riveting example of modern day Shakespeare. Everyone's talking about the fourth season of the Emmy Award winning series, Succession. Don't miss the drama, deception, and family betrayal. In the final chapter of this gripping HBO show, sign up to watch at showmax.com. Oh man, Oscar's night shift just started, but luckily, so has tonight's game. With his attention switched to the pitch instead of the parking lot, he needs just one more result going his way. Howie! This is the final hurdle in Oscar's multi bet. With Win Boost, another great feature from Betway, every leg he adds will boost his win by up to 300%. And there it is, it's a shoe! Bra -ba -ba. He came in like a thief in the night. What a goal, what a win boost, all thanks to Betway. T's and C's apply. Licensed and regulated by the Western Cape Gambling and Racing Board. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. For gambling counseling, call SARGF on 0800-006-008 or WhatsApp 076-675-0710. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Jerry Shabala is his name. Remember it forever and ever and ever. I mean, you, you're almost replicating what your the male side is doing. <laughs> In 27 games, 27 wins from the 30 games that you have. When the initial uh, league was launched, we went all the way without losing a game. Yeah, you had the 30 game. For me, Rob, uh, I still have to work harder. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't want to compare myself with anyone. But when I, when I look back uh, from the Sasso League, there was there's a late coach who really inspired me and Jabu Mabasu was the head coach of Palace Super Falcons back then mm. you know I always kept on saying if he could do it three times in a row what will stop me to do it three times in a row Hashtag MSW Hashtag MSW All right we creep into the final moments of our interview the exclusive chat that we've been having with the chair Special Olympics South Africa uh, Dr. Matthews Passam and Muzi says on social media, the Special Olympians have brought about the awareness of people with special needs because prior to that, the society that we were brought up in uh, discarded, they hide or chain these individuals from uh, living as human beings. And more excited now uh, that we've learned that Dr. Possa is involved. Hey, that's a certain Gordon Templeton sending us that message. Gordon, thank you so much indeed. Put a smile on the chairperson's uh, face right now. Let me take the CEO, Ancilla Smith, who joins me uh, for a brief chat on the line. Ancilla, thanks so much for your time. Good evening. Good evening, Robert. Thank you so much for having me on. 
Yeah, I mean, great, great work. Uh, like I was saying to the chair that uh, it really takes a special team to be so dedicated to a special cause like this. Um, and as 947, and as Vuma FM, Rise FM, Sowetan Live, we certainly support. We're going to challenge ourselves as well to contribute towards, you know, at least beating uh, the chairperson's uh, total. <laughs> so that is what we're putting out, out there. Uh, I like that. Yeah, um, 100%. I've, that. I've recorded that, but so I'm, I'm incredibly happy. Thank you, Robert. I'll, um, I'll keep to my word. I'll, I don't know if there's any a, anything that you would want to fill. You know, we've tried to cover as wide a spectrum as we can. Uh, you know, we could take two hours talking about this, but the fact is we, sure. we, 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 we're planting the seed on fertile ears right now. And, and I think that's what we need, Robert. I mean, we really just need our athletes to get the recognition and support that they deserve. And I'm sure that um, having having us on your show, I'm hoping that the right ears are listening um, and we'll be supporting this national team when they go through to Germany. What would you say, just to, given your experience, uh, makes the collective so special, especially with the uh, this year's team that is going across? I mean, I think, you know, uh, the beauty of Special Olympics is, is again, everyone competing within their ability level. And um, just, you know, it, it just always astounds me how well South Africa does um, at these games with very limited resources. I'm sure Dr. Porsche has told you about the medal count from, from the last couple of World Games. Um, and, I, I, you know, I honestly think that there is definitely a South African spirit it is very evident um, in our team. And, and actually, really, we do stand out um, at these games. We're always known as the singing team um, because our athletes sing wherever they go. Um, but um, there's, there's definitely a, a South African spirit, a feeling of, of Ubuntu um, and, and togetherness that this team takes with them to every single world game. And, and records have tumbled in the past. I mean, recent... Uh you know, the World Games, some of the results, whether it was Los Angeles that were there, records were tumbling in Austria, so were they tumbling in the UAE? I mean, the UAE definitely, 35 gold, 15 silver, 12 bronze. I, 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 you know, I question whether any other team has ever brought back that kind of medal count. Um, you know, and, and because it's not elite sport doesn't mean that our athletes aren't, you know, doing their absolute best to represent our country. And so thank you so much. We'll be in touch. As I said, we're reaching out to everybody that's listening to us across the country, the continent and the world uh, to truly support uh, what will be a great movement. And we can all say, OK, all tickets stamped and ready to board and we'll all be smiling. Music to my ears, Robert. Thank you. Thank you for the support. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks, Chair. Um, okay, can I say something to you, Robert? Yeah, please. You listen to me carefully. Let me win. If I cannot win, let me f- fail in the attempt. That's our slogan. Wow. That inspires us. No one loses in Special Olympics. We all win. Can I make you lose? You can't. I can. Please try. I can beat those two tickets that you've got. Try. This show can... I might increase. This show can put you to shame. I might increase. The show can put you to, f- to shame. I might, you know, I might increase. We, we, we could load one more. We could load two more. I could, I I'm could, just saying. I could run to, with, with you like, like an auction. That is fine. That is fine. <laughs> let's we, go. Let's we, go. We're ready. Let's go for it. Now. <laughs> we might be breaking some BCCSA <laughs> rules here. We, say, hey, we have not okayed an auction show on the radio. <laughs> but I'm just saying that we, we are but, ready. But, I think but, South Africans but, are ready But as Robert, well. thank you very much for promoting this with such passion Absolutely. and such competence. There are not many sport uh, pro, uh, personalities like you in this country. We celebrate you Thank because you. of your passion and love for sport, all sport. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. I think yeah. you're doing an amazing job. I, I look forward to Thank the you. day that we can obviously announce here on the show that all has been sorted out. I know the good heart uh, that people have. You know, Prime Media, whether it was here, 702, uh, you know, Rise FM, you know, talk about Vuma FM. Talk about Sowetan Live. You know, you talk about South Africans that want to see people happy. We're living in crazy times, and I think we just need to break away from that, celebrate humanity and people doing extraordinary things. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a safe thank trip. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank and you very much. Thank you to your team as well. Thank I, appre- you. I appreciate thank- your punctuality as well. I mean, what a, what a, 
What a <laughs> <laughs> what a, I'll never forget that. So I'll keep reminding you yeah. everywhere and uh, every time I see you. <laughs> ask anyone in business, I always keep time. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> Bye. No, Bye. no wonder those zeros are in the bank. <laughs> Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide, the legendary Sami Kufo joins me. Maybe firstly, give me your impressions about what you saw with the change of guard of coach when it did and Thomas Tuchel came in. But you, you know, uh, it's uh, very difficult for, for the Bayern team because of the changing the coach at this moment. Bayern doesn't want to uh, take any chances. They don't want to take any risk. Tuchel believes that it's not over yet. Uh, do you believe him? Do you believe that they'll have a comeback in half? It's a football. It's, a, it's full of surprise. What happened to Barcelona, I think, three, three years ago, four years ago, when they were losing against uh, Liverpool, three, they were to make it three, three, and then four, three. But moreover, there's a lot of things that can happen in this second game. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Yeah, I'm getting nervous. Yeah, hey, this this show today, you know, from bodyguards to CEOs to yo, know, vice presidents, former, all manner of things, and that is why we love sports so much in the country. Um, and I think there's going to be one issue that's going to really tie me up uh, to my next guest. I'll, I'll tell him in a second. Uh, he doesn't know, but I'll tell him in a second, uh, because. I've been having conversations uh, for many, many years, especially within the NBA, an organization that's always, always, always been very close to me as well as very close to this show. Uh, kind of leaves me empowered and also knowledge fueled. It's not even because basketball is one of my favorite sports, but simply because I get to learn deeper about the organization that is far one of the best run sporting associations in the world. So much so that it goes into making the NBA, the NBA. Who do I compare them to when I say, who's going to be better than NBA? The next word that pops up, NBA is better. So, um, and that's what's been thrilling in recent years and seeing just how they've invested immensely in basketball on the African continent, both on and off the court. To cut a long story short, many moons ago, I was approached and I was asked, do you want to interview Patrick Ewing? And I said, sorry, you're asking me what? You're asking me? To interview who? Why is that even a question? And boom, in the studio for the very first time was my interaction with the NBA and NBA Africa. And, and so on and so on and so on. This is about George Land. This is about NBA Africa Senior VP and also Head of Strategy and Business Operations. Who's here in studio with me? George, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Robert. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, heard so much about you. This is my first time meeting you, but yeah. know that you're the premier sports journalist on the continent, so it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. That's an honor. It's a difficult one to swallow because I, when I heard, when I heard, I might not own what you've just said, but I'll, 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 I'll say thank you. When I, when I heard about NBA inside stuff, I was a kid. I loved what I was seeing. And that inspired me to so much more. Yeah, football was the number one passion. But when I saw what was going on in Inside Stuff and the ownership of that show, I said, I want to do television. And uh, when you went on to win all these multiple awards and the Emmys and everything else, I said, absolutely, I am inspired then. And here you are today. Little did you know of that little story. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. What was so special about that? Because we, we were so hooked. It was on the public broadcaster, so we kind of like had to watch it. You know, it was a great time. Yeah. Um, we started that show in 1990, 1990-91 uh, season. Yeah. And it was one of the things that the late Commissioner David Stern insisted on with uh, a new television contract with NBC. Yeah. Is that we have a spot, 30-minute spot on Saturday mornings. 
and it became sort of legendary. That that show was ahead of its time. We were we were doing features with all the players. We were doing fun stuff. We were doing highlights. At that point, you know, it was hard to get basketball highlights, so people would tune in on Saturday mornings to see the highlights from the from the night before. Yeah. We would stay up all night doing the show and deliver it to 50 Rockefeller Center at like four in the morning for the 11 o'clock you know show. Um, it was a great time. I worked with Ahmad Rashad and Willow Bay and Summer Sanders and uh, some of the best times uh, of my career. Yeah, if ever you pick up my book, the name Ahmad Rashad is there, simply because of that. <laughs> he was my mentor. He was my mentor. Incredible, incredible human being. But also, you know, we talk about so many things, and I know we're not going to have time, but here is something that you might remember. We are here to celebrate greatness. For the final time, number 24 on the floor, 6 the clock there to block Trevor Booker and desperate to get to the basket and score and he does hey. Kobe nice. number two well they're playing to him there's no doubt about it a lot of bounce a lot of energy every night he gives them a strong move Kobe to the basket oh pretty and one Kobe Oh, boy. Gets a two. Oh, boy. Four in a row for Bryant. Look at Kobe. Give me the ball. Feeling it. Firing. Oh, got the ball. This is like old times now. I look at you and you say, yeah, memories. And I know you were at that game. I was at that game seven years ago today uh, that took place. And one of the most special moments I've ever experienced as a mm. as a fan to watch Kobe um, who I had first interviewed as a high schooler uh, because he was part of the McDonald's All-American game and I used to do my gig and so when he was 17 in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania I was the first NBA you know colleague to, to yeah. interview him and and over the years we, we became friends and my time during China um, he would come every year and at that point we were developing a show together so we become yeah. pretty close and so I came for the game. I flew over from China for the game, and he missed his first five shots. And I remember thinking, man, I, ho I hope he gets into double figures this game, yeah. you know, because he's, you know, he's past his prime. And then to watch him will himself, you know, just mind over body mm. and become what he, you know, what he was, it was amazing. And to sit there and just think about the 20 years of watching this young man perform, uh, it, was, it, was, it was great. And then afterwards, uh, he went into the press conference yeah. and he got asked questions in English, Italian, and Spanish. Spanish. And he answered in whatever language he was asked the question. And it was, it was just an amazing, amazing time. And I stayed to the very end with, with his family as he took photos with them the last time in, in, in Staples as a, as a player. Uh, it's something I'll always remember. Um, it's, it's something that, that lives with me. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad I was there for that. And, and today, I mean, I, I gotta remind when we posted, so many of the basketball fans were like, this is incredible, are you, are you joking with us? Is this man coming to your studio? I was like, yeah, because he also, you know, commemorating, you know, the anniversary of Kobe's last game, his 60 point game that we're talking about. And that's why I kind of dug into the archives. We've got to remind people what this meant. A historical occasion for a historical men. You know, 2010 was big for South Africa, but I had also the pleasure to, to be with him at, in Orlando at uh, the Nike Center. One-on-one -on -one interview. Again, like I say, cementing what we're having right now with the NBA and continuing with those conversations. Yeah. And you know, the, the one thing that people forget about that game, he did score the 60, which was the highest yeah. point total of any player that whole entire season. But but they were also down by 15, and he came. He he brought them back single-handedly almost, and and they ended up winning the game. So it, it was it was classic classic Kobe. Stick around because NBA Africa senior VP is here with us, head of strategy as well as business operations. Uh, George Land is here. Any questions? We are an interactive show, so 
Ask those questions. Don't write at the end and regret it. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. When choosing your next Audi, have peace of mind knowing that the future value of your latest investment is guaranteed. Drive the elegant A4 sedan from 999 per month at a fixed interest rate with Audi Assured. Audi Assured is a progressive finance solution designed to be as flexible as you are. With no risk to you, you can now drive the latest Audi more often. At the end of your contract term, you can choose to retain, return or trade in your vehicle. Contact your nearest Audi dealer to find out more. Audi Assured. Finance your Audi with tomorrow in mind. Offer subject to approval from Audi Financial Services, a division of VW Financial Services, PTY LTD, an authorized FS and registered CP. T's and C's apply. Audi. Vorsprung durch Technik. Galaxy S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel camera brings you wow-worthy resolution. So much resolution, in fact, that you'll be able to zoom, crop, scale, and print your images without losing any detail. Now that's epic. Buy any Galaxy S23 now and add the Galaxy Watch 5 from only 49 Rand per month. And get free Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, valued at 399. Galaxy S23 Series. Share the epic. T's and C's apply. Are you feeling rushed and stressed with traffic, laundry, dinner and the rest? Worried about the dark hours creeping near because of the pesky sheds? Oh dear. I shame South Africa. You need a reason to smile. Master Chef and Savings are back at Spa. Shop and collect stickers every time you spend 100 Rand or more and save up to 70% on the gold and silver colored Master Chef Cutlery Collection or the Master Chef Cast Iron Casserole Dish. Turn every meal into a Master Chef moment only when you shop at Spa. T's and C's apply. Spa, we're for smiles. What are the pros of betting on Lotto Star? We offer the highest guaranteed payouts in the country. You can bet on our major international lotteries, quick games, real rush games, live games, and the real jackpot race. It's 100% legal. You can bet anywhere, anytime, 24-7. How lucky can you get? Go to lottostar.co.za, your world of live games. Lotto Star is licensed by the Impomalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800 006 008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. And by the grace of God, they're back on home soil almost a month later. Let's catch up with uh, Rufus Matsana, Marumo Gallant's uh, media officer. What was the 37,000 US dollars for? Do you want to break down also for arranging what he says is everything? That is not a true reflection, remember. And even most of the things that he was saying, uh, these guys, I'm taking good care of them. I'm taking them for rides to wherever, wherever. He would tell us, guys, in the evening now, uh, I need to go out and uh, you coming with me. Uh, Dr. Ali El Zaga. In my hotel, they are eating, they are using my electricity, they are using my internet. Business is business. I don't want to anyone to play with me. I don't care about money at all. Because, I mean, if you resist, you don't know what would happen to you. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. All right, final stages of our chat, as I said, yeah. The exciting thing is that we were talking about greatness before the break. And when you talk about greatness, we are in the middle of the play-in tournament as well as the NBA playoffs tip off this Saturday. Yeah, talking about this Saturday. So LeBron as well as the Lakers qualifying from seventh spot. I don't know what else, George, can the fans look forward to in the upcoming weeks? It's going to be an yeah. epic, epic playoffs. I don't think that there is one team that is sort of this year the – just the full-on favorite. Obviously, Milwaukee is is a favorite. Obviously, in the West, Denver's played very well. Uh, 
But, you know, you can't count out some of these teams, and yeah. especially in the West. Um, you have five teams, the top five teams. Um, you have the Denver Nuggets. You have the Memphis Grizzlies. You have the Sacramento Kings. You have the, uh, the Clippers. Uh, and you have the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. None of them have won a championship except for the Sacramento Kings, and that was 72 years ago when they were the Rochester Royals. So you have these five teams, you know, that haven't won a championship, and I think they're – they're all, they're all good. Yeah. And uh, now that you have Kevin Durant back with uh, with the Suns, they are formidable. Um, you know, you don't know about Memphis and how they're going to perform because mm-hmm. they're they're so young. Uh, but obviously, they're very talented. Um, in in the in the East, oh, and of course the Lakers, right? You have LeBron um, and AD. So um, they're sort of a wild card. You, yeah. you know, are they starting to get it going now? Maybe. Maybe. Um, it, it would seem like it, though. Yeah. You know, it, but only one team, it, it, you know, since we went to the 16 team format, yeah. uh, who was seated lower than fourth, has ever won it. And that was the, the, uh, the 94 95 Houston Rockets. So it's, it's rare that someone that, you know, has but seven isn't, seed. Isn't LeBron James about rare? Isn't he about. Whatever's never happened is going to happen this time. Isn't he about that? That's that's true. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's, it's so worth tuning in uh, because, <laughs> you know, his greatness is on display. I mean, yeah. the guy just does not seem to get old, even though his age says he's older. His game is not older. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing. And, in, and then in the East, you know, you have two teams with, with two guys of African descent who – you know, really could be MVP of the league this year. And so it's really exciting to see Joel Embiid healthy. Yeah. And I think he's in the middle of, a, you know, at the end of a regular season that, you know, could see him as MVP. Um, and, of course, Giannis is just the unstoppable force. Uh, and, you know, he just seems yeah. to be getting better and better. So so there are going to be some amazing um, matchups, and I think the 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 playoffs will speak for themselves. And I hope everyone tunes in. I know you will, yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and, and I will. But I hope a couple everyone of does. messages as well, just saying, please ask where can we tune in? Where where can the South African audience actually watch? The games are going to be on ESPN, right? And also, we have NBA League Pass. So if you go to the NBA app and you can sign up, um, you can you can also watch the games there. But they'll be on ESPN, and um, you know. There'll be games in our prime time, yeah. um, especially this first round. So I hope everyone can tune in. There will be a time where the games are on uh, later in the evening, in the night. That's crazy. Um, we, we never get to sleep. That's why we come here sometimes just trying to wear sunglasses. But we can't because we're live on YouTube. So people are thinking, is it trying to be cool or what's like? No, we've been watching. <laughs> you know, we've been watching NBA games. But it's worth it. For me, it is worth it. Here's a question that's coming through. Josh is calling us in Alberton. Good evening. Hi, Mr. Maraba, how are you? I'm great, Josh, man. Welcome. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. And so it's an honor to speak to you as well. Great honor um, chatting I, to you. My question's actually a bit of a two part question. The first question would be is there's a lot of there's a lot of South African youth that have a that have a deep passion for, for basketball. You know, a lot of schools are playing basketball now. I mean you look at you look at King Edward School there in, in Joburg, they play basketball. What would the obviously I know there's a lot of logistics involved, but what are the chances that we'll be able to get one of the big teams like you know Chicago Bulls, LA Lakers to actually come out and actually play a match for the South African audience? Sure, that's a good question. Um, before you drop the, I know you got a second part to your question, but I'll ask you to hold on so that we don't miss a beat on that one. You want to handle that, George? No problem. Yeah, sure. Look, we've done global games all across the, the world. We haven't done one in Africa yet, and it's something we're looking into. Um, and, and when I say South Africa, we haven't done one in Africa sure. on the continent. Yeah. And so at some point, that's going to happen. Um, we don't have a timetable at this moment, but I know it's going to happen at some point. Uh, so, so Josh, I, I hope you can hold on. Um, it's coming, but yeah. we just, you know, we, we're still looking into the logistics and 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 thinking about how that would work yeah. for the well, team. Was we we've seen? I don't know if you were there, Josh. Uh, it started off at the Standard Bank Arena, uh, then it had, you yes. know, and 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 those are more. You see the big superstars, but those are more exhibition type games. So you're not going to get the guys going, you know, full on like we saw, you know, when when Lionel Messi came here for his last trip to South Africa. 
the, the agreements that are made. Like, hey, don't go and injure the guy. You're talking about <coughs> multi-million dollar players here who can't afford to be injured outside of their employ. So when they do, there are repercussions. And I think, George, those will be one of the things that you would have to consider is that it's got to be a proper game played in a proper surface. And that is why you don't just play on any surface, even for those exhibition games. No, that's right. And that's, that's part of the calculus, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, is that we have to find arenas that are NBA uh, ready arenas. Yeah. Uh, the courts have to be sort of you NBA know, perfect approved, for NBA yeah. approved. Yeah. Um, we've had Africa games, as yeah. you're as you're referring to mm. in, in in 2015, 17, and 18. Those were, like you said, exhibition games yeah. where all star players and African oh, yeah. players came over and they did an exhibition game during the summer. Yeah. Um, at some point, we'd like to bring teams over yeah. and have them compete on the continent. Yeah, Josh, go ahead. Uh, well, the the second part of the question is. Is the NBA looking at South African or African players in general uh, to to you know bring them over to the US so that they can enter that arena and and compete at, at that stage? I mean, we all know South Africa is a, a, a sport mad loving country. I mean, we we're very passionate about our sports, but you know, I think I think as as a South African, we'd like to see if if we can compete at that level. So mm. is there the talks with South African teams to go up against those big teams or, or even the universities to see if we if we can match that. Or take players over there. Before George even answers, Josh, let me ask you a final question. Is that are you aware of basketball without borders? No, I'm I'm not actually aware of that at all. Yeah. So that would have been the foundational step that NBA took. Um, you know, so when you had so many different players uh, that came through here to lay the foundation, if you look at the development that's happened, uh, even in the Northwest, uh, you will see what is what has happened there. The, the facilities are incredible. Uh, it, 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 it's something that boggles the mind. I, I would urge you, uh, once we finished with the show, just to Google basketball without borders and see what they've well, done, well, especially like in Pukeng. Uh, because Pukeng have okay. got some of the, the, the craziest facilities, both for men and for women, and they've done some amazing work. When I talk about amazing, oh. I'm not hyping them up. It really is. It's almost like standards that you would wish were happening in other parts of South Africa, but they have started. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Joshua, I always appreciate your contribution, and I'll let George answer the rest. Yeah, thank you, thank you Robert. Uh, you know, we, we're really trying to develop players from grassroots to elite. And what you refer to in Peking, at the Royal Bafa King, that was our first junior NBA program. Um, we have junior NBA programs all across the continent. Um, we have a scouting network now that we look for talent and we try to send them to the Basketball Without Borders camp that you just referenced. And in fact, um, in 2011, Joel Embiid was one of those campers. And in 2012, Pascal Siakam was one of those campers. That's how they were found. Um, and we have an academy in, in Dakar, Senegal, where we have 24 of the best players on the continent. Um, so to Josh's question, we're developing that. We're looking in South Africa too. We, we, we have junior NBA programs that we, that we have that we're looking to try to develop talent. And it's going to happen for a South African uh, at some point. Um, we're, we're focused on making sure that we develop the talent all across yeah. the continent with South Africa, obviously being in our backyard, we, we would love to see a young man or woman, um, play in the NBA or the WNBA. I mean, as, as we chat now, I've got one of the, the leading media personalities who's, who's worked in cricket before. He hasn't given me permission to use his name. I'll have Kazi, I'll, I'll drop it anyway, because he's just sent me a text now. He says, you know what? <laughs> He says the vibe at school matches. And he's, he's sent me three different video clips. He says, my son has given up cricket. So cricket was his dad's vibe. Now he says, my son has given up cricket for basketball. So it is these kind of stories that will make you smile. When he talks about the vibe at the schools, come on, George. Hey. Look, I have a 17-year-old son who plays here in South Africa as well. Yeah. Loves the game and, and the vibe. At these games, these high school games, these club teams, it's amazing. Uh, the kids are passionate. We, we have coaches that, that, you know, my basketball ops team has helped develop. We have, um, you know, coaches clinics to help coaches 
learn to teach the game even better. Yeah. Um, and and the talent is 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 really good. Um, and and so we're just trying to trying to help it get to the point where it can become elite. Yeah, I was talking about Dikembe. Dikembe Matombo comes and he talks about the hospital that he built. That you, you want that kind of energy. And 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 the beautiful thing is that he's brought so much passion, energy, personality to the game every time you know he's been to South Africa. And that is why I always admire the heart of what the NBA players do when they come back, you know, to Africa. And that is why you heading off north now. You're going to be going off to uh, to Cairo. You're going off to Egypt. That's right. We're going to be there uh, April 26th through May 6th for yeah. the second leg of the BAL, um, the Nile Conference. Uh, and we're going to have six teams there playing to advance to Rwanda, to Kigali for the playoffs and championship. Um, there'll be eight teams in, in Rwanda and um, looking to crown a third champion. We had um, a team from Egypt the first year, a team from Tunisia last year, and uh, this year, uh, Tunisia's out. Okay. So um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see who who who, who gets the championship this year at the BAL. Cape Town Tigers? Possibly Cape Town Tigers. They, um, you know, they signed Zaire Wade, Dwayne Wade's son. Um, but even on top of that, they have a really good team. <laughs> and they're coached well. They have a good ownership group. Uh, so, you know, we're looking for big things from Cape Town Tigers. You've answered my question why Dwayne Wade's been coming to SA so often. <laughs> hey, we just see him, you know, stroking tigers and things on the game drives. In time, he's kind of like, you know, dropped his son off, said, hey, chill, yeah, Cape Town's great. So I love that. Tell me about the store, though. I mean, it's just down the road here in Santon. And as you go down the escalator and you see NBA store, you almost feel like you're, you're in New York. And it's a real deal because people are warming up to it. Just give me a, a quick wrap in terms of how's that doing and, and what can people look forward to as far as the store is concerned? So the store is a beautiful store and it's our first um, NBA store on the continent. And we're lucky enough to have it right here in Stanton Mall. Um, and you're right. It's catching on. The merchandise is beautiful. Um, sales are good. Um, but we encourage everyone to visit. We have also a, an e-commerce site as well. And we're looking to expand the number of stores in South Africa and across the continent. So um, I'm seeing more and more jerseys around, which is nice to see. Yep. Uh, and so it, it, it tells me that it's catching on. Yeah, if you're wondering, yeah, George is a veteran of 27 NBA seasons. So he's not just somebody who talks about it. He's lived it, gone across to China. He's improved the broadcasting. Hey, we might steal you here and just, uh, you know, give us a little kick <laughs> up the backside. Let's <laughs> say, <laughs> what's going on? You know, get this TV thing going. Let's see what we saw in China happen here. Because I mean, you you were great. January 2013 to 2019, NBA China launched a new captivating show, and it was prime time on CCV5 and so on and so on. What was the difference there briefly? I know we don't have much time. Yeah, that was a show that uh, I co-wrote with a, with a, a colleague back in, in New York. Um, it was a lifestyle show. It was yeah. a two-hour show in primetime on Thursdays. And as soon as we launched it, it became the number one sports show on CCTV5 uh, for seven years. The seven years I was there, it was number <laughs> one. And it was really about bringing a localized flavor to our league and um and talking about things that we knew that the chinese audience would watch and look there's a there's a huge population there but we were getting you know an average of four million viewers a night and um and it, it, that was an amazing time uh it was nice to see cctv warm up to the idea uh which we had to sort of uh convince them that this show could be a game breaker and by the end we were just such great partners with cctv5 Thank you for keeping us company during COVID, man. You know, we, we, we loved what we were seeing. I was like, is, you know, the story of Michael Jordan. Wow. And you're such an, a major, major part of that. Um, that. That's probably substance for another show. But all I'm saying is thank you for keeping us company during COVID. We needed that. No, our pleasure. That was a show that uh, we, had, we had shot behind the scenes of that team in 1998. And it took 22 years for us to finally get everything perfect to put that on air. And uh, it kept me captivated as well. I couldn't wait 
until Monday morning when the when the show dropped here in South Africa. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was you kept great. us on tenter hooks, man. That's all I can say. Really did, George Land. Thank you so much. As I say, this has been our last stance. This has been. Go watch it if you haven't. It's actually will be a disgrace if you haven't. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.